Greetings, ladies and gents, and welcome to this latest version of uh, Tales, Tales from Tales, Outer Tales, Space, Tales, Space, Tales, Space, where I take an HFY story from somewhere around the internet and read it aloud for your enjoyment. All the relevant links are down below. Like, subscribe, and all that YouTube comf to help this video and channel grow. Anyways, as always, I hope that you enjoy. I would just like to thank the following tier 5 patrons and channel members for supporting the channel. Fallen Angel, Buzz Kennington, Data Magnet, and Bob the Dragon. Thank you again, and now on to the story. Willpower, written by Digital332006. Ambassador to the Telerock, Alexander Sankronanstix, prepared himself for the likely last diplomatic mission ever. He straightened his tie, making sure he looked presentable in the mirror. He had spent the night reviewing messages and sending virtual mail from his room in the capital city of Chomska. Room was a bit of a luxurious word for it. It felt more like a prison to him. The Telerach were not overly friendly, and Alexander had been informed as soon as morning came that his escort awaited him downstairs. He was directed into the large vehicle surrounded by armed men. His thoughts wandered off to the species that humanity was at war with. And it all started with a lack of understanding. Or so he thought. Humanity was still fresh on the intergalactic stage and was trying to leave its mark. They took offense to some of the less than honorable morals of the Telerot people, who routinely enslaved races that they viewed as lessers and committed various atrocities in the process. One aspect of the Telerok that helped in their claims of superiority was the fact is that they, as a species, had psychic powers. Having not heard of an old adage, with great power comes great responsibility, they simply used theirs to do as they willed, often at the detriment of others. We thought that we'd be unique in the aspect that we always bickered and fought, but it seemed to extend to a galaxy at large as well. The idea of a unified alien council often made its way in our media, but it was just wishful thinking. The universe as a whole was cruel, not simply planet Earth. The Telerok took offense to the boycotts and sanctions that humanity wished to impose on them, using their might as would a bully and attacking human colonies in retribution. The battles proved to be a hard fought and even harder win. Casualties mounted on both sides, although the human ones were higher. They lost no ground. Thankfully, they were mainly fought on the colonies far away from Seoul, but the governments were now worried that it would soon reach home. As such, Alexander was sent to try and end hostilities. The vehicle stopped, letting Alexander disembark before it left again, leaving him stranded in front of their seat of power. Alexander took a long, deep breath, conjuring up mental fortitude to continue on. As he climbed the steps to reach the top, two guards stopped him. Halt! We must inspect you! The robot's translator voice spoke out. Alexander extended his hands and arms as they ran some kind of scatter over them. As the guard probed the scanner to the front of the human's chest, it beeped. Ah, terribly sorry. Pacemaker here. I have a health card in my wallet. The Telerock guard scoffed in disgust. Pathetic, weak creatures. How have you not perished yet? Alexander considered the moment, replying, Willpower and ingenuity, they are my people's greatest assets. With a shake of their head, the guards let Alexander enter. The interior was magnificently decorated, with rare metals on display, woven and designed with great care by talented artists. Such a shame, Alexander muttered to himself. Some type of security guided him along to the room where the Telerock seemed to be waiting for him. They were dressed rather splendidly, long flowing purple robes with intricate motifs, and Alexander could feel the power that seemed to radiate from them. Noticing him enter the room, one of the five waved to the secretary to close the door and indicated a small chair to the human. 
You know why you're here, human? To discuss surrender. The other four nodded, smiles on their faces. Excellent. The usual terms, then. Alexander had barely had the time to sit down as he stood up again, readying himself to leave. Thank you all. You'll receive the demands within three to four cycles. The one that seemed in charge had turned back to the human. It pivoted rapidly to face him as it heard its words. What? Alexander cleared his throat and spoke nicely and slowly. The demands for your unconditional surrender. A moment confusion set in, but was quickly broken down with the roars of laughter. Barely able to contain their fits, insults flew from their mouths as they could hardly control themselves, calling him deranged, lunatic, and clueless. Did they send the stupid one? No, it's your unconditional surrender we're looking for. Oh, there's a misunderstanding then. Humanity has no desire nor intention to surrender. The Telerach's face contorted with rage and twisted with malice. Power erupted from its mind as it seized Alexander and lifted him up midair. Raw venom came from its mouth. No, you misunderstand. Humanity is in no position to demand anything but our mercy, which is in very short supply. Alexander couldn't control any of his extremities. His whole body was paralyzed except his head. No, you'll torture me, he managed to croak out. Yes, all will see the weak humans broken by us, a prelude. Of what is to come, you'll be made an example for your entire species. A stark reminder of their place in the universe as we tear you limb from limb. Looking at the Telerach, Alexander smiled. Ad Astra her aspera. Alexander used all his strength to chew on something in his mouth. Home quickly rising to his mouth as he spasmed uncontrollably in midair, still held by the Telerach telekinesis. Ah, it killed itself. A shame, really. Well, no, I suppose we will have to... Wait, what is that sound? A faint sound originated from the human's body, a sort of beeping that seemed to accelerate rapidly. A blinding light was the last thing the transmission sent out before abruptly cutting off. End of story. Story number two. Poisoned by Rosie 013. The Galaxi were the greatest warrior race in the entire galaxy, unmatched on all accounts. It's why they rule the universe. They can kill anything, defeat anyone, injure any environment, all to win every single time. Except for one tiny, small blemish on their records. They used to also claim that they could survive on anything. They don't make that claim anymore. Not since the humans first showed up. The humans entered the galactic scene in the way that most races have. Accidentally discovered by the Galaxy looking for one particular resource or another the Empire needs. Naturally, the Galaxy moved to annex the humans, and the humans said, No, politely. More amused than outraged, they made to take what was theirs by birthright. Just another upstart surf species who didn't know their proper place. A little show of force would be all it took. Those humans hadn't even left their cradle planet yet. Galaxy soldiers deploy directly from their ships, out to the airlocks and simply falling to the planet below. It wasn't a new tactic, but the humans were suitably impressed, having never seen the like. How could any species fight against creatures that were tough enough to survive re-entry, undeaccelerated landings only, to get up and start fighting without anything worse than a mild discomfort. Answer, you can't. No one can. 
and the humans' first few battles, if the slaughter could be called that, prove that point yet again. But the humans are stubborn things, and fought on regardless of the hopelessness of their situations. Then, uh, something completely unheard of happened. Some galaxy got sick. Just a few at first, the affected individuals could not fight on and had to be evacuated. What had been an easy, almost leisurely pacification had just become deadly serious. The medical specialists were baffled. They knew nothing of how poisons or toxins affected their species, because there wasn't any that could affect them that they knew of. The only known clue was the vector of transmission. All of the sickened individuals had been eating whatever local biomatter was available to them when hungry, as was the way of the Kalaxi soldiers' variants. So what made this planet's biosphere different? As more Kalaxi got sick and the sickness worsened, the Empire reluctantly did something in its panic it had never done before. They sued for peace. They needed the humans to help save their army before the sickness spread uncontrollably. Without it, the entire arms of the galaxy would revolt. The Galaxy didn't have a dedicated diplomatic corps. Why would they, when they simply took what was needed? The common human was as much of experience with politics and intrigue due to a millennia of complicated social structures and extreme planet-wide resource inequalities. The humans realized this early on and quickly capitalized on their new advantage. Galaxy war leaders were furious, but helpless as the humans robbed them blind at the negotiating table. Time was of the essence for the second, so the humiliating demands were agreed to. Humans secured their own corner of the galaxy as a private empire built with claim rights to systems and reverse-engineered galaxy technologies. Indignant galaxy populations calmed over the decades into grudging respect for the creatures able to tolerate such dangerously poisonous food sources. Eventually, regular trade grew commonplace between the species, and for the first time ever, the Kalaxi saw another species as something other than serfs. But the humans, they never revealed that they discovered all the early affected Kalaxi soldiers had eaten human meat. Human meat from a cancer hospital that hadn't been evacuated in time. There was nothing poisonous about the human biosphere at all. Most of the provided antitoxins were placebos. It is still the greatest heist played on our overlord Galaxy masters ever made to this very day. And our revenge for the servitude is that they will never know. End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed, and if you do, please consider supporting the author, even by popping over and leaving a thumbs up or a nice comment, just to show your appreciation for the story. However, if you wish to support this channel, there are links down below which will help immensely. I will see you all in the next one, and until then, I hope that you have a fantastic day. Cheers.